I'm currently cracked on 300 milligrams or caffeine or something like that, I'm not entirely sure. What I am sure about though, is that today is December 31st and I'm wearing a t-shirt, my man. Throughout this year, 2022, I've learned a lot of things. If I had to write down a list of things that I learned in 2022, I would have an entire dictionary, my man, because there would just be so many pages. I value my time highly and hopefully you do as well. So let's get right in. Number one, when clock hits 12, nothing will change. I know it may seem obvious to some people, but I actually learned this on January 1st, 2022. When the clock hits 12 and oh it's January 1st and it's New Year's. For maybe about 10 minutes you will feel the hype, you will feel euphoric because oh it's the New Year's. 15 minutes later you're going to realize that nothing has changed. You're still depressed and you still don't know what you're going to do with your life and you haven't done anything productive so why should January 1st change anything? I know New Year's is a big event for some people but when you realize that we're just celebrating earth going around the sun, it becomes, I don't want to say meaningless because it does have some meaning, but what I'm trying to say is just because it's January 1st does not mean that your depression will go away. Around February this year, I had been going to a gym for about five months or so and I had barely any visible results. I looked okay, but I didn't look very strong. I didn't look like I lift. Hell, I've been going to a gym for a while now and sometimes I do feel like I do look good and that I do have an aesthetic physique. Other days though, I just look at myself and think, bro, I don't even look like I lift. Why am I even going to a gym? I know why I'm going to a gym, to build a 10 out of 10 physique. But you have to realize, if you want to start going to a gym on January 1st, which I believe is a stupid idea, but if you want to start going to a gym, don't expect quick results. This is the harsh reality that you have to face. You don't have perfect 10 out of 10 genetics. And therefore, progress takes time. And I've actually got a quote for you. Anything that is good and worthwhile in life takes time. So be patient with it, especially if you're a teenager, you've got some time, okay? If you're 17 years old right now, you fix your diet and you start going to a gym and of course you optimize all of the other things. For most 17 year olds, by the time you're 22, you will have the perfect 10 out of 10 physique. This video is gonna be long as f Number 3. Having good mental health is easy. I know you've been taught that depression is some uncurable disease that you have to take Adderall in order to fix. But here's the thing, if you're currently depressed, you probably do deserve it. Unless you're some major exception and you were genetically born with depression, most people nowadays who are depressed, they absolutely deserve it. I know some people will hate me for saying this, but I have to say this to you. If you play League of Legends for 12 hours every single day, you don't exercise, you eat shitty ass foods and you go to sleep at 3 a.m. Depression is honestly a thing you deserve. You absolutely deserve depression if you don't do anything in order to fix your mental health. You know how to stop feeling depressed. Do meditation and journaling for a month. That's literally what it takes to have good mental health. And you will realize quite quickly, having good mental health is absolutely easy. I could talk about mental health for another 3 hours. After this video, go on to Google search and type the science of well-being Yale University. This is a free course that you can take on Coursera and it's the basics of mental health. What is mental health really and how do you improve it? This course is legendary, I'm serious. I'm probably going to retake the entire course next year in January. Contrary to the last point, number four, being good at nofap is extremely difficult. I know you watch all of those nofap YouTubers who tell you just go on a 90 day streak and you'll feel good. But here's the thing, if you've been building this habit up for literally years, doesn't it mean logically that it's going to take at least a few months in order to break this bad habit? Let's say hypothetically you started watching and f***ing when you were 12 years old. I know it sounds kind of ridiculous to say that, but some guys, they find f***ing at age 8, maybe 9. You start f***ing at the age of 12 and you discover no fap at the age of 18. So 6 years of this bad habit, how long will it take you to break this bad habit? Well if you watch all of these no fap YouTubers, they tell you, yeah you'll be able to go on a 90 day streak and you'll have these amazing superpowers. But here's the reality that doesn't sell, being good at no fap takes years of effort. I've been in this game of nofap for around a year and a half and I'm still struggling. For some people it will take a few weeks to break. For some people it will take literally years. 
to get to the golden point. The next thing I wrote down is eating healthy foods is a hundred times better than eating the normal standard American diet. I know the education system hasn't taught you all this stuff about nutrition and diet, but trust my word when I say that eating a healthy diet is a hundred times better than eating the standard American diet. Once you slowly remove all of the bad things that you're currently eating right now and replace them with actual healthy meals, you will never go back to eating unhealthy foods. Meanwhile, this unhealthy food is so damn addictive, you just cannot stop eating KFC. But on a real note, if you're still eating that junk food you ate when you were five years old, at least consider eating a healthy diet. Number six, childhood experiences shape the rest of your life. And if you've been traumatized as a child, you will immediately know what I'm talking about. If your parents used to beat the shit out of you, you will always have your cortisol up and you will always be in that fight or flight mode. But what you probably don't know is how your parents treated each other. That's how you're going to treat your future wife or husband. Let's say you're three to five years old and your mother is a commander. She's the head of the household and she always gives orders to everyone else. Chances are, when you grow up, do you know what your type for a girl is going to be? It's going to be that same boss bitch that your mother used to be. For example, if your father actually loved your mother, you will feel that need for love and you will actually love your partner. But if your parents didn't really display any love, they were just kind of chit-chatting and not really doing anything. They slept in separate beds, which is an important one. You will feel naturally that you don't need love in order to survive, which for a lot of people, I feel like including me as well, is the case. The next one is lack of father figure will ruin your courage scale. I'm gonna quote Jordan Peterson here. It's very difficult to be a courageous person if you have no father figure. I mean, your father is going to be the one who teaches you about discipline, about courage, and all those other stuff that are connected to masculinity in fatherless households, which there are more and more of. In those households, you're not taught discipline, you're not taught hard work. And I'm sorry, but your mother cannot really teach you discipline and courage because your mother is feminine and your father hopefully is masculine and without that masculine energy you just grow to be this androgynous human being which is it's sad to say the least number eight this one is going to be sad for all those video gamers video games are extremely manipulative why are video games manipulative well i'm going to tell you why it's due to the fact that video games give you fake progress. Fake progress? What do you mean? Let's say you decided to complete a video game like Hollow Knight. That game took me a hundred hours to complete. Now those hundred hours are just wasted because I didn't actually get anything from that. And I got this false sense of achievement where in reality I didn't do anything. Now, now on the other hand, Let's say you put 100 hours into the gym, that's around 2 months of progress. And you will quickly realize that going to the gym for 2 months is way better than playing video games for 2 months because you actually get something from it. If you still play video games and you watch my channel, then honestly, get out of here bro. Number 9, this one really helped my productivity and that is timetables. Why do you think we have timetables in school? It's because they're extremely effective and you need to set a timetable for yourself. I know it's going to seem cringe, here's what I want you to do. Write down on paper your ideal day and the timetable for that day. Stick it up on your wall and look at it every single day. I'm sure you're going to be at least 50% more productive. Number 10, this one is for those guys that are more advanced than their self-improvement journey. Here's what I mean. Purpose has layers. Sometimes purpose means mission. Sometimes it is the reason for that mission. But you don't really know how purpose works. Purpose is kind of like a hierarchy. Imagine an onion. Inside of that onion, there's a core. And around that, there's just layers. Well, that is purpose. And I think Maslow's hierarchy explains this concept better than I ever will. Through achievement, you peel all of these layers and eventually you get to your core purpose. But you have to check every single step in order to peel that layer. Number 11, mindset will make it or break it for you. Imagine there are two identical persons. One has a growth positive mindset. He believes that he's going to achieve his dreams. And another one, he's doing the same job, but he believes that 
he will stay on the same weight forever and he's not going to change. Of course, the first person is going to be more successful. Mindset will make it or break it for you in a lot of situations. If I started this YouTube channel with the mindset of I'm going to fail, I'm not going to succeed. I probably would have already failed. Oh, this one's kind of tough to say. Number 12, most young men are sex and intimacy deprived. Here's my argument. We all know what hypergamy is. It is a fact that women date upwards and due to inflated egos and many other stuff, all women want the top 10%. Every single woman wants to be with the top 10% guy. That will logically mean that 90% of men, they're deprived of love and intimacy. A lot of guys are simps nowadays because they're just deprived of love. If we were born 50 years ago, this would not be a problem, but most young men nowadays are insults. Number 13, business over school. This lesson is only for me. I personally want to go into business. I want to feel the stress of business. I want to be more successful than my peers. I don't want to go to school and sit for six hours every single day to learn about subjects that are not even useful in my life. That's just me though. If you are an inspiring entrepreneur, you have to realize this one thing. Business over school. It is possible to do school plus business, but you will have to sacrifice so many things in order to balance those two, it's not even worth it. You're probably gonna have to stop caring about the gym, stop caring about mental health, and the only two things that are going to be inside of your head is school and business. Why not focus on business and self-improvement? Logically for me, that makes sense, but if you want to get a college degree, then go ahead, bro. What's stopping you? I ain't. I'm gonna offend you. Everybody has an internet addiction, including you. How many hours do you spend on the internet? Be honest with me. Say the actual answer, not I spend around one hour a day. You probably spend eight hours on the internet. Modern men spend around eight to 10 hours on their screens every single day, which you may ask yourself, how is that even possible? I'm asking myself the same thing, but chances are you probably have an internet addiction. Try not to cope, try to say, I do have an internet addiction and I'm going to do something in order to fix that. That is what I did a few months back and now I think I don't have an internet addiction. You want to know how to stop binge eating and how to stop eating those foods I spoke about? The fact of the matter is you need to get educated. What do you know about nutrition now? Calories in, calories out and uh, I have to hit 180 grams of protein every single day. That's what you know about diet. You don't know about diet. You need to start learning. You don't even know that bad foods exist. I know you've been spoon fed this fitness YouTuber propaganda of all calories are the same. They're not. Not all calories are the same. Let's say we have ice cream and broccoli. They both have the same macros. This is just hypothetically. I know it's impossible. If you were to eat the ice cream, you would literally be storing more fat than if you were to eat the broccoli, which has the same macros and calories. I mean, seriously, think about it. 300 calories of donuts and 300 calories of kale. Is that the same thing? This one is from the book exactly what to say. Do you know what magic words are? Here's the thing, us humans were pretty simple. In almost every single language here on earth today, there are certain words and phrases that literally manipulate you. They change how you think. If you read the book, you know what I'm talking about. And it's a short book as well. You can probably read it in one day if you wanted to. This is an amazing lesson. Number 17, the three attachment styles. This one is from the book Attached. And what are attachment styles exactly? Attachment styles are kind of like your dating personality. This is your psychological type. So what are the three attachment styles? There's avoidant, anxious, and secure. Avoidant, you probably know what this one is. If you are a girl and your father left the home, then your attachment style is going to be avoidant. You will be attracted to men that give you less attention. This has been proven many times. Anxious is kind of like the opposite of avoidant. You're really attached to this person. You're not even dating this girl and you're just so damn attached to her. A lot of guys have this problem where they attach to a girl too quickly and they have an anxious attachment style. So they believe all of this nonsense in their head like, oh, we're together already, even though we've literally talked for 15 minutes. And secure, it is the ideal attachment style. You're not avoidant, but you're not anxious. It is the perfect attachment style to have, and we should all be striving toward having a secure attachment style. We're close to the end, don't worry. Number 18, leaders are made, not born. Brian Tracy talked about this concept in his book, The Psychology of Selling, and that is leaders are made, 
not born. You can choose today to change your self-image. You're not a follower anymore. You're a leader now. So what does a leader do? Well, he's obviously the strongest. He gets the most women and he gets the most respect out of anyone. You have to ask yourself this one question. What do I do to become a great leader? And you will get some, let's say, interesting answers. Anything in life that is good and worthwhile takes time. I know I've already said this quote about muscle building and such. This one, I believe, came from Plato. He said this exact quote in his book. And it does make sense. You want to become a pianist. You want to be good at piano. Okay, invest five years. You want to have a 10 out of 10 physique. A goal for many young men. Okay, invest at least three years. You want to build a business from scratch that generates you $10,000 a month? You're gonna have to wait. And through sheer perseverance and discipline, you will realize that anything in life that is worthwhile takes time. Number 20. Gym is the gateway drug to self-improvement. What I mean by this is, when we start going to a gym, we usually start doing every single other self-improvement habit. Yes, there are some guys that just go to a gym and they do every single bad habit on the planet imaginable. But for us guys who are on holistic self-improvement, the gym is going to lead you to greatness. And I have a saying that I say to myself constantly. If I can build a 10 out of 10 physique from scratch, I can probably build a business that generates $10,000 a month. And you should have the same mindset as well. Number 21, believe you are worth more. Now, just because you had C's and D's in high school, that means you're worth right? It's not like that exactly. I have C's and B's in school, which isn't, you know, that good. It's average. So therefore, I should think that I'm average. I should think that I'm worth $12 an hour. Do you know what my hourly wage is? It's $50 an hour. I don't make anything from YouTube. Currently, as I'm recording this, I've made $5, not from YouTube, from Rumble, but $50 an hour. Why do you value yourself so damn highly? It's because if you believe that you're worth more, you will become worth more. You already know the placebo effect is real. So therefore, if you believe that you are actually worth $50 an hour, you will be worth $50 an hour. And number 22, I'm just getting goosebumps by saying this. Hard times create strong men. Strong men create good times. Good times create weak men. And weak men create hard times. Thank you for watching and thank you for just listening to my ramblings this entire year of 2022. It was a great year overall, but let's make 2023 even better, shall we? I won't be recording for the next few days. See you in 2023, bro.